Hi, Roofing Professionals. Welcome back to another episode of the Roofing Webmasters Podcast. We have Anne Berlin back with us. I'm back! Yes. Very happy to have you back, Anne Berlin. I'm glad to be back. We enjoyed interviewing the other people, but you're, I think you're just so much more fun. Thank you. Yeah. Don't tell Jason I said that. I won't. <laughs> um, today, we're going to be talking about something near and dear to your heart. Yes. Which is social media marketing. Yes, it's the best. Ah, oh, I love it so much. <laughs> well, today, we're going to be uh, building a bare essentials kit for roofing professionals. And by that, we're going to take the elements. Let's say you're starting out on social media for the first time or you're just taking your business on a particular platform for the first time, we're going to dig into the elements that you should explore first and that are going to get you the most bang for your buck on your marketing dollar uh, to begin with. Now, we have a handful of platforms that we're going to be discussing, um, but before we mention that, let's just I just want to go ahead and put it out there. Not all of these may be the best fit for your business. That's true. It's worth exploring. Yes, right? because you always want to find the best thing for your habits and your business mm -hmm. to create an optimal sort of connection with your client base. Mm -hmm. And speaking of connection with your client, you want to make sure that the platform that you're serving targets your specific demographic for your clients as well. So if it matches your business and it matches your demographic, it's worth exploring. With that, let's go ahead and break into our first platform, yes. which is Facebook. Facebook! Yay! Now, what's, uh, what's a great starting point for Facebook? The best starting point is, of course, creating a business profile. Mm -hmm. Now, as everybody knows with Facebook, you go on there, you see a bunch of profiles for people that you might have known way back when. Mm -hmm. But businesses can have their own profiles, too. And that's a great way for them to get the information they need out to clients, to engage with clients and answer any questions they might have. The best part about it is, if you answer one question or have one piece of information on there for one client, all of them can see it, so they can all get to you. That's a great point. You always want to think about, okay, how can I answer the questions that my prospective clients will have? Because a lot of people, actually, I think they have over two billion active accounts yes. on Facebook. <laughs> which means a lot of people are still on the platform. Yeah, it's not slowing down. Oh no. And with that in mind, there's a lot of potential to connect with people from your given community, uh, whether they look you up through Google search or they actually find you through the Facebook platform itself. Yeah, because that's the crazy thing. Facebook can actually work as a search tool as mm -hmm. well. Um, if people are on there and, for example, say someone's looking at the roof and they're like, man, I really need new shingles, um, they can go ahead and search for roofing companies in their area. Mm -hmm. So if your roofing company is on there and they say, like, for example, roofing company Fort Worth, it could bring you up. It's not as ranked as Google is. Mm -hmm. So that's a little tricky and it is based on how people search as well so if you say roofing company in your company name but it, they just say roofs you might not pull up as readily you know one factor that I didn't even think about earlier um, on Facebook and this is something I've seen every once in a while a lot of users uh, use the platform to ask for recommendations yeah. for their friends and there's actually like an official ask for recommendations tool on there now you can say hey i'm looking for a new hairstylist hey i'm looking for a roofing company wink wink <laughs> and if somebody if one of your uh former clients is on there then they might use that opportunity to recommend your business and people will look you up through the platform right and these are all the free tools that come with facebook yeah. that can help your business now like Amberlynn said, you want to make sure that you fill it out completely and are ready to answer questions that people have on, uh, on your Facebook account, your business account. Right. So that's the free side of Facebook. There's also an advertising or paid side of Facebook. Yes. Now, there are different types of advertising. Amberlynn, why don't you take us through that a little bit? Well, it gets a little complicated, but I'm going to try to keep it pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, you might have seen, the first one that you might have seen is when you have a post and it's doing pretty good and you have people commenting and liking or reacting like mm -hmm. with laughing faces. Um, 
it'll it may say boost post and a blue button or it'll send you a notification that says hey your post is doing super awesome do you want to go ahead and boost it that's the first kind of advertising and it is paid advertising so let's say you had like a piece of uh, content mm -hmm. uh, or a video that you had uploaded onto there and it was doing very well and you were actually getting calls yeah. about it that might be a good option to promote that post. Right. Okay. Now, the downside of this is you can't control as much who sees it. Mm. So you can go ahead and say, oh, I'll put like $20 towards that and have a specific range, like your service area. Mm -hmm. But you can't necessarily guarantee that these are the people that actually want your services. They're just people in the area that can see your post. Okay. So is there another option that gives you more control? There is. And that is option two. And it's advertising management, ads manager. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so with that one, it's a back-end tool that you can see as the owner of the page. But no one else can see it except for you. So you have an ad account. And with this, you have varying levels of advertising. So you have different what they call campaigns. And these can be anything from, I really want people to come to my business and talk to me about my different roofing materials. So you'd say a brick and mortar store visit ad. Or I really want more people to engage with me on my Facebook page and see my page so I can grow my community. Mm -hmm. That might be a page like or a post engagement. Mm -hmm. But it all depends on what you want to do with it. So because they have so many levels, you can play with them and be like, I want people to go to my website and just see what works best for you. Mm -hmm. Now, from what I've seen, and I know you've had lots of experience with this, Facebook advertising is actually a very accessible uh, platform, even for a beginner. Yes. Would you say? Yes. I mean, people who have never really had experience with going online and trying to run an ad campaign can pick it up fairly easy. And they can experiment with it, they can find out what works, and they can pretty much you know, find success you know, really easily if they're, if they're doing it right. For sure. And Facebook will walk you through step by step. Like on each part of an ad creation, mm -hmm. it'll say like, this is where you set your budget. This is where you set your demographics, which in Ads Manager, you can really hone in there and say, I want people specifically looking for roofing mm -hmm. or metal roofing if you're doing that mm -hmm. um, for that particular day. Yeah. And on top of that, they also have little tools in there that'll let you adjust it to make it run optimally. So they have one, for example, it's a little dial that goes from less to broad and it has a little green zone and it'll let you dictate how your ad is going to run and if it's going to reach the optimal amount of people. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's one thing about Facebook. It just has such a great reputation for customization, being able to optimize for the various demographics. And since there's so many people on there and it collects so much data, it's easier for them to make sure that the ad actually shows up in front of the eyes of the people who need to see it most. For sure. Yeah. So Facebook, it's a great platform. It's a great starter platform if you've never used a, an advertising tool before. And there's lots of assistance, lots of uh, helping tools to get you started on your way. So make sure you fill out your free profile, yep. answer all those popular questions, mm -hmm. and why not try out some ads along with that? Now on that note, Facebook does have a very closely related platform. Yes. And uh, that leads us to our second entry, Instagram. Instagram, it's the baby brother of Facebook. <laughs> Oh, it wasn't, it, it got bought up by uh, Facebook, right? Oh, like years ago. Yes. Yeah. Um, not too, too long ago. Well, I want to say at least three, maybe more. It's been but long enough that you might, you might forget and you're like, oh yeah, that's right. They weren't always part of Facebook. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But nowadays it's been integrated so well that the two of them seem almost inseparable. That's true. Yeah. Now, Instagram is a much more visual platform compared to Facebook. It mostly deals in the currency of videos and pictures, right? Right. They do a, they're do. they growing more with videos now. For example, they have their IG stories, which is the little 
short videos you'll see. Mm -hmm. um, they even have a longer one called IGTV where you can have full length videos on it, but it's always pictures and short videos on profiles and connecting with people through the little heart button. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of advertisers and small businesses out there have been scared of Instagram because it has a reputation for catering towards younger demographics, people who like to consume uh, visual mediums uh, at a higher volume than, than older demographics. Now, while that's partly true, mm -hmm. um, there are like, you do have your teens on there uh, in very large numbers. Um, you ha do have an aging 20s to 30s demographic that is very experienced with the medium and they're very active on there. Right, and some of them might be first time home buyers. Exactly. So they're gonna be needing roofing repair soon. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, that's, a, that's a very great point. Mm -hmm. They fit squarely within your target market, which makes Instagram more of a viable platform than ever before. The good thing about social media platforms nowadays is it seems like the audience actually grows with the platform now, mm -hmm. as opposed to it being a fad and then jumping off yeah. as much. We're seeing a lot more um, platforms start to mature mm -hmm. and become more of a daily staple in our lives than just a passing Oh, that's interesting. Snapchat's cool. <laughs> uh, um, the next thing. Yes. Uh, Facebook, for instance, while you know other people, a certain percentage may have gone on to other platforms, it still has over, like we said, two billion active accounts. Yes. And Instagram is also still growing, meaning there's still amazing opportunities to connect with people. Yes, for sure. Yes. So. Instagram, we have free stuff, we have paid stuff. Uh, we've already talked a little bit about the advertising. What would you recommend on the free side of Instagram for a roofing professional? For a roofing professional on Instagram, now you don't have to have a standard profile. You can have a business profile on Instagram as well, which gives you a little bit more information to fill out such as your contact phone number, your email, your website, a little about us. On Facebook, you can have like the long lengthy story of how your business got started. Mm -hmm. But on Instagram, it's more punchy. So you kind of want, we are an awesome roofing company in Fort Worth, Texas, mm -hmm. for example. So you can get playful with it. Yeah, yeah. you can. and. On top of that, you don't have to be very serious all the time. Mm -hmm. Like you don't really want to be very like, you want to be informative and professional, but on Instagram, you can kind of play a little bit more. So you can have, these are our guys replacing some shingles and at the same time have fun around the office. Mm -hmm. So that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Now, in summary for Instagram, there are paid and free activities to take advantage of there. And if you're wanting to target those first time home buyers, uh, it's a wonderful place to be active. Now, you don't have to hire a professional no. to take photos. You can just take your phone and mm -hmm. be like, snap. Yep. <laughs> now, if you start doing that consistently, you can build up a very quick presence mm -hmm. on those that people can go and like, hey, this is their roofing work. And for compared to other industries, roofing is a very visual industry. People, yes. People want to know what their roofs are looking like. And also on top of that, some roofers that we've seen in the past have mm. done like the drone hook cover over. So think about all that content <laughs> that you can put on your profile. You can finally yes. take advantage of that drone footage you've been holding back. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Now, speaking of footage, that, that brings us into our third platform. Uh-oh. Yes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Which is YouTube. Yes. YouTube, one of the purest visual platforms out there and such an explosively huge part of our lives nowadays. Yeah. Um, I have little reports on my phone every week that tell me how long I've been on my phone. And they'll say, <laughs> oh, you've been on your phone for so and so hours this week, our average this many hours a day. And I know in the back of my head, at least half of that's on YouTube. Oh my God, yes. I could guarantee that if my phone reported like that, it would be like, uh, we saw you from the moment you woke up to about eight and then starting at five all the way into the evening, YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I feel you there. Yeah. Now that just goes to show you though, how much opportunity 
and I guess you could say uh, window uh, there is to get your stuff in front of consumers for yeah. them to see. It's a huge audience on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they're all looking for really interesting like how-to content, entertaining content, mm -hmm. just a huge variation of things that they're actually looking for. Mm -hmm. So you can probably hit a gold mine on there. Yeah. From a content marketing perspective alone, you can create some great how-to guides like you mentioned. Yeah. Some great images of how you work and your projects. And you can just embed that onto your website for for great SEO juice. Yeah. Quote unquote. Um, it's a great way to revamp some stagnating pages if you have that problem. Um, but at the same time, it's just a very digestible medium that people can find out a lot of information about your services mm -hmm. very quickly. Yeah, you can have your branded channel, so your business's personal YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and it all goes together. Also, keep in mind that Google owns the YouTube. So Yes, <laughs> that is something to keep in mind. You might see better returns on YouTube as opposed to other visual channels that aren't owned mm -hmm. and operated by Google. That's true. Yes. Now, there are lots of... Uh, different types of ads that you can run with YouTube. Um, one of the nice things about it, you pretty much have a guarantee that people within your target market are active on the, on the platform. Right. And that you can manage to get your ads specifically in front of them. Right, because it, to, oh, it uses ahead. a tagging system. Yes. So it's going to help you find that particular person interested within that particular field. So mm -hmm. even if you're just, they're looking for roofing for whatever reason, they're, they're going to find you. Yes. And uh, you can also make sure that it's narrowed down within your geographical area so mm -hmm. you're not getting people outside of your service area calling your business, which would be wasteful. Yes. No. <laughs> now, as far as recommending um, advertising go, you don't have to create an elaborate production to, to make an ad on YouTube. Mm -mm. You can create a simple 15 to 30 second something that shows your work, that reveals and showcases your professional team, and you can quickly give people a sense and create a perception about your brand. Right. You don't need to find the biggest production company in town and say, I really need a 30 second video. It can be something you do real quick, again, on your phone or with a little bit of a nicer camera. Mm -hmm. At least get like a selfie stick or something yes. to help you, uh, or a, a drone like we talked about <laughs> earlier. Yes. So that the footage is steady and, you know, make sure that you're you're camped and like all your clothes are nice and whatnot. Right. You don't want to do this in your in your bathrobe. No drummies. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's really easy and it's really accessible for people who haven't advertised before. Yes. Yeah. So that's uh, that's a third platform that you can try out. Uh, whether you want to do just free stuff or whether you want to invest some of your ad spend. Um, now, in your personal opinion. Do you think there is any other platforms out there that might be worth it for? There are co always try a platform. Mm -hmm. So I always suggest if it's something that looks like it might be a little bit easier on you as well as connect with your audience, mm -hmm. definitely try it out. Um, but one that I'm interested in is Pinterest. Right now, it's not quite where I want it to be personally, mm -hmm. but it is a good idea for sort of content marketing. You can post a picture or a blog post with an associated picture and it'll link back to your website. So that's cool, but it's not quite quite there yet in terms of social media. Yeah, you probably don't want to you probably don't want to use that as your main mm -mm. Uh, platform. However, it does have uh, it does have a demographic um, that is, you know, would be a homeowner. For sure. Um, so that's something you can explore on your own time. Um, however, at this point, I probably would say that your top 3 best options are Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, those we can highly recommend. Oh, for yes, they are your best options. Yeah. And there's lots of opportunity and people to cater to there. So, three platforms. If you had uh, one takeaway that you wanted our roofers to bring with them at the end of this video, what would you want them to remember? Just one takeaway, always keeping me to one. <laughs> um, I'll let you have two takeaways if you want. Okay, thank you. So the first would be always take advantage of the free stuff. 
go ahead and fill out those profiles. Make mm-hmm. sure you have your best contact information because it's a citation at least. Gets your business out there and yep. you can connect with the possible customers. Also, don't be afraid to experiment with ads. Mm-hmm. It's, I know it's money. It's one of those things where you're like, I really don't want it to go and nothing to come from it. But until you try an ad or a campaign, mm-hmm. you can't really get that advertising dollar to return. Mm-hmm. So. Um, my personal recommendation, uh, and this is something that I think a lot of businesses forget about, these social media marketing platforms, they do take some time which is why you don't want to tackle everything at once. And every, any marketer who would say you need to be on every platform, um, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, however, if you're going to be on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, make sure that you regularly return to check out your profiles. Uh, especially with Facebook, people will sometimes go onto your Facebook business page and ask you questions, or they might leave a review. And your response time is a critical factor in yeah. your actual Facebook page's performance. Yeah, it shows that you care. Mm-hmm. And it also helps you build deeper relationships with, with people. So that's brand and gold right there. Well, Amberlynn, I'm so glad to have you back. I'm glad to be back, guys. And uh, I'm very glad that all of our roofing friends here were here to, uh, to listen to us. Yep. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.